So today we're going to talk about Megatrawls. My name is Josh Frank, Senior Applications Engineer here at Jim Myers & Sons. I want to thank everybody for being here. Many projects, these can be viewed as ancillary pieces of equipment, but occasionally, sometimes these account for sometimes millions of dollars on projects. So the typical types uh, that we run into are of trawls are used for as effluent trawls, filter trawls, clarifier trawls, and sluice troughs. These are available in stainless steel or aluminum. Got a few pictures here showing some uh, effluent troughs, radial clarifier troughs, and then circular clarifier troughs over here. So effluent troughs are used in large sedimentation basins with plenty of settling time. The quantity and length of the trough is determined based on overall length of weir required at a given flow. Uh, multiple different support configurations are available, and uh, we custom design those from project to project. Uh, sometimes design of both the trough and supports uh, this takes some risk out of the hands of the consulting engineers, so they don't have to design it themselves. We can supply multiple different configurations of troughs and circular clarifiers. Um, you can see over here to the left we have uh, radial troughs. Here in the middle, we're showing some steel, stainless steel or aluminum trawls around the perimeter. And then on the right, we're showing some weir and baffle if there happens to be a concrete trough. Uh, the 10 state standards give some criteria for size and spacing of filter trawls. Most of the, many times, I guess, filter manufacturers supply these, but uh, GMS can be involved for rehabs or of existing installations or if the filter manufacturer doesn't have a stainless steel option for some reason. Uh, you can see here we got two filter trials for basin or three. We can custom design any layout that's needed. Sluice trials uh, are typically used uh, instead of a conveyor between screens and compactors most of the time. We can design any configuration. Uh, you see this drawing over here. We're showing screen inlets at each end feeding to the middle. Um, over in this drawing we're showing screen inlets at one end feeding through slide gates at the bottom of the trough over here. And then we got also some diverter chutes atta that uh, attached to the screens over here. Also submerged orifices or V-notch weirs are typically used. Uh, it's about 5 to 10 percent cheaper to go with submerged orifices over V-notch weirs on a typical trough project. Some typical sizing criteria shown here for maximum vertical, side wall, and bottom deflection. Uh, at a given flow, we typically use this chart to determine the width and height. And then from there, we uh, design the shale thickness and external stiffeners as needed on a project by project basis. Uh, sometimes engineers want to design trawls and sails and let them be picked up in miscellaneous metal specs but they may not realize some of the risks associated with that, especially when seismic is involved and harmonic oscillations have to be accounted for. So our main competition on these is fiberglass trawls, uh, such as from manufacturers such as MFG, Nefco, Enduro, and others. Some advantages we have over those are that we can provide, well actually we can provide in round bottom multi-tangent brakes, as you can see here, or flat bottoms. We can provide in 50 foot long sections. We have access to a 50 foot long break that should give us some financial advantage over competitors who might have to form in smaller sections and then weld it in their shop. Um, stainless steel and aluminum have su superior resistance to UV degradation. Uh, stainless steel and aluminum can span nearly any distance between supports with an appropriate shell thickness and external stiffener configuration. Uh, I think fiberglass might have some trouble with that. And stainless steel and aluminum will not splinter or damage other equipment like fiberglass may at end of life. Uh, here we have a project spotlight from a recent project in Yorba Linda, California. There were, uh, it was about $200 million worth of horizontal flocks and 300 million dollars worth of troughs in the sedimentation basin. You can see here the basins were quite large. These were 100 foot long sections of troughs, 
supported at each end and then also supported in the middle. So we were spanning 50 feet between supports and uh, had a custom stiffener, uh, external stiffener pattern because uh, they had some very rigorous uh, wind and seismic requirements on the jet. So to summarize, our mega troughs are available in stainless steel and aluminum. Custom designed them for vertical and lateral loads as needed. We can supply these in flat or round bottoms. Uh, the cross stiffener design uh, is custom designed for um, to prevent harmonic vibrations. We can provide adjustable weirs, V-notch weirs, or submerged orifices, and we have um, much greater strength and durability than fiberglass. Stainless steel is about $250 to $350 a foot, and uh, fiberglass is, they're usually a bit less than that, 10, 15% or so.